Champions Cup final, folks. La Rochelle. They weren't supposed to win this one, remember? Everyone said, bookies and the algorithm and everyone said, Leinster, we're going to romp home. 24 points to 21. It goes right down to the last minute, basically. But, um, yeah, what a crazy game. I've just watched it this morning. Um, a bit delayed, seeing as it was on in the middle of the night here in NZ. But anyway, we'll go through... Some of the key events of this game, the Champions Cup people haven't uploaded their stats, which kind of sucks because we're hours after the completion of the game now. I'd love to see the numbers, but oh well. We'll start off with a big congratulations to the La Rochelle boys. Ronan O'Gara, man, like I said, they were written off, but they did a pretty bloody good job. Um, the game's not played on paper, and they surely proved this one. Um, Leinster, to be fair, though, did have... Um, a fair bit of pressure early. And a, a stat I would like to see would be uh, turnovers one, breakdown steals, because La Rochelle's ability in that area certainly got them out of jail early when uh, the Leinster boys were putting some pressure on. And multiple times in this game, I think uh, that ability for the La Rochelle boys to get that kind of key turnover was uh, was pretty important. But that being said, Leinster got on the board through Johnny Sexton. Um, three points to nil with a penalty. And um, too many penalties for La Rochelle earlier. The discipline was really, it was really poor. I mean, it goes to 6-0 after 8 minutes. It's offsides. It's tackling guys without the ball. It's, um, I mean, I know they're trying to come out of the game or start the game with a really high intensity. They're trying to disrupt what lengths they can bring. But they're not doing themselves any favors by getting themselves on the wrong side of the referee's whistle because... Leinster is such a team that you don't need to be giving them any, any favors to be kind of piggybacking them up the field. So, yeah, six points to nil. But that being said, Raymond Rule, first chance really La Rochelle get with the ball in uh, in Leinster's half. And uh, that man is able to score a try to nowhere. He is such an elusive ball carrier. He's always been a phenomenal attacking threat, and he uh, he proves it again in this one. And it's uh, fellow South African Dylan Lades who helps set him up uh, by kind of drawing the man and getting the offload away. So a great well-worked try. I mean, in terms of ease on the eye, it's maybe the try of the game. Certainly not in terms of the importance of the outcome. And I guess they all add up for the same value. But um, the last one is probably the one that'll be the highlight reel one. But still, the rule one was, it was pretty sweet. It was a pretty well-worked move. So uh, seven points to six, ER West got the kicking boots on today. And... Um, yeah, they're actually in front. It's a lead change, kind of seemingly out of nowhere after being under the pump for the start of the game. Interestingly, Keller had to go off. Keller had to go off for um for Leinster, and he had just thrown a really wonky line out throw. So um, I don't know if he was injured. the The commentary team said it was tactical, but it seems unusual to take your starting hooker off after fourteen minutes because of a line out throw. I don't know. Uh, surely he had something going on. But uh, obviously not ideal to lose him. But uh, Leinster were back in front a few minutes later anyway on 22 minutes. Um, nine points to seven. It's another penalty. They had a drop goal attempt on 28 minutes. Uh, that one went wide. I mean, La Rochelle tried a droppy later on as well. It's one of those ones where, man, if they're going to do a goal line restart, just try the droppy. What do you got to lose? You're still going to have field position anyway. So both sides try that. Neither side was able to get it. Dulan tried it for La Rochelle later on. Zixton tried it early on. So, yeah. Um, to be fair, towards the end of the second second half, end of the first half, La Rochelle, I thought, were looking a wee bit more dangerous of the two sides. And um, they even managed to kind of work an overlap, but the final pass just couldn't stick. Like, uh, I think it was the pass from Lades to Dulan. It was like just a bit behind him. It needed to be, you know, just kind of slightly in front of him. Obviously not forward, but you know what I mean? He needs to be running onto that ball, but it was just kind of slightly where he was rather when he is, if that makes any sense. Uh, it's early in the morning, folks. But um, yeah, Dulan knocks it on. So Leinster's defense is able to hold kind of under the onslaught. Um, and uh, right before halftime, actually, Dulan, speaking of that guy, it's only kind of a minute later uh, after Leinster have managed to exit. He gets caught in his own um, his own in goal area. Uh, there was, um, I think it was Jimmy O'Brien. I mean, just running hard lines, right? Putting him under a lot of pressure to make sure he can't get an easy kick away. Dulan tries to step him. He, uh, I think he gets tied up by Jamison Gibson Park. So it's, uh, it's a good chance for Leinster to attack before, um, before halftime. They managed to go for the tap and go. La Rochelle offside again. They opt for the three. 
12 points to 7 lead at half time. I mean, they're keeping the scoreboard ticking over pretty nicely, are uh, uh, the Leinster boys. I guess looking at the final score now, you could go, maybe you guys should have gone for a try, but it's a final. Honestly, if you if you get opportunities to take kickable points, especially ones that are pretty much straight out in front, you'd be kind of mad not to take them. So I get why they keep the scoreboard ticking over the, with the penalties. I mean, it's three tries to nil, so that's the game. But um, still, uh, I, I wouldn't. at no point was I like, you guys definitely need to be going for the tries right now. As I said, in hindsight, you could argue that, but... At the time, for mine, it felt like the right decision. Second half, another breakdown. Uh, been a success for La Rochelle. Sees them get close uh, on the you know um, on the board because it's a it's an Ohio West penalty, twelve points to ten. But um, man, Leinster pressure again. Uh, that one was from a nice little. I think it was Jimmy O'Brien again, actually, with a nice little kick to put the uh, the La Rochelle backfield guys under pressure. They ended up being the ones to take it into touch. I think it was like a bouncing ball between James Lowe, who didn't have that much going on, and um, and was it Lades? So, uh, yeah, a good attacking chance for the Leinster boys. And uh, they managed to get a penalty here because it's offside again. I, how many offside penalties? I'm not sure. It's a lot. So it's 18-10. It's a two-score lead. Starting to look a bit more comfortable again because that one try has kind of been... I don't want to say against the run of play, but there's not been many clear-cut try-scoring opportunities. So eight-point lead in this game, I thought that's looking pretty tidy. Um, Dulan again misses the drop goal, like I mentioned earlier. Um, but it ended up working out anyway because um, Leinster failed to clear it, ended up conceding a penalty. I think that was at the moment where Sexton was uh, in two minds as to whether he could get out on the full and got caught. Either way, uh, Leinster conceded a penalty at the breakdown. There's a five-meter line out for La Rochelle. They go for the mall, and Bougari manages to go over on 60 minutes. So, like I said, the try-scoring opportunities were pretty few and far between. But credit to La Rochelle for going for the try, man. They're eight points behind. Now they're only one point behind because they've managed to get that try. Um, but just as you're thinking, like, the momentum is going to be with these guys now that they've got this try, Laveau gives away what must be one of the dumbest yellow cards you've seen like happen in a final i mean it's only a it's a kind of innocuous looking trip on jameson gibson park but it's so obvious that my mind is exploding with what he's thinking here i mean i guess it's just a reaction but like what are you realistically gaining from chipping up gibson park who's chasing a kick at best he's probably putting the guys on side i don't think he's getting anywhere near the kick dumb and picked up by the officials so Laveau cynical play gets yellow carded it's honestly such a needless one and I was like if you guys lose this from here it's kind of deserved and Leinster uh, are able to opt for the three because the penalties from where the ball landed right so 21 points to 17 I think it was Ross Byrne who took that one to be fair though he had a little bit of a he looked a bit awkward when he came on he had a bit of I don't mean to pile on with that guy because he gets a lot of stick as it is but um he had a bit of the dropsies when he came on. He struggled under one high ball, a couple of knock-ons, like in kind of what limited minutes he got. But he did slot the penalty pretty well, first kick of the game, first and only one. Um, Gibson Park, high tackle, leads to another La Rochelle Mall. It's a penalty. They're kind of piggybacking up the field. Um, this is all when uh, La Rochelle got 14 men on the field. They're scrumming it. Botti is the flanker. They're keeping it tight. They're getting advantage. Um... The yellow card period goes over, so La Rochelle are back to 15 men. And from here until the end of the game, it's literally just La Rochelle knocking on the door and Leinster's defense just holding and holding and holding and holding and holding. It was kind of just like, which one's going to break first, right? The defense didn't look like breaking. Are La Rochelle going to knock it on? Every time they did knock it on, it was happily for them when they had an advantage. Interestingly, Wayne Barnes didn't mention any like yellow card warning despite um, a seemingly high kind of number of back-to-back -back penalties in the 22 but um eventually 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 on like what is it like the fourth attempt la rochelle retier manages to go over and only just bloody barely i think he trips over his own man's feet uh if not for that he goes over kind of easily i think after such I don't know, like, relentless effort. They had to, because the, the Lens defense wasn't giving an inch, but eventually he trips, but he reaches out. And that's a, that's a gutsy decision, because I don't think they had advantage at that time. 
And if he if he if he's short or if he drops it or anything that goes wrong, I think that's probably the game. But he reaches it out and his arm is just long enough to kind of roll the ball onto the line. They had to TMO it to check it, but it was a pretty good grounding and they take the full time for the conversion. Ehi yeah, West manages to knock it over, so there's not even time for a restart. And that's the game, man. Pretty crazy stuff. Some pretty key moments, like I said. Retier with that final try. As, as I said, pretty gutsy. Um, yeah, the La Rochelle boys to uh, to put the pressure on Leinster when Leinster had the, the one-man advantage will be will be brutal for the, the, the Leinster coaches and fans to look back at if they watch this one again um, because that's when they should have been turning the screws and potentially winning the game. Like I said, you could blame Leinster for not opting for, for, um, for tries, but it's a final, man. It's like a test match. If the points are on offer you pretty much take him, and they were leading for most of the game. Just not quite at the end. I'd love to rattle off some stats, but like I said, uh, they didn't have any on the website match or player stats, which kind of stinks. But um, yeah, I think you'd say some of the guys who you would have expected to be a bit more dynamic for Leinster maybe were kept a bit quiet. Like I said, uh, James Lowe wasn't really given a chance to get into the game. Hugo Keenan... I saw him get smashed by Bougarit at one point. Like, when you look at Hugo Keenan not being the biggest guy, that's kind of what you expect to see. Like, he usually has a bit of razzle-dazzle, but he was kept pretty quiet. So, yeah, some of the ball carriers, um, you know, weren't able to kind of get over the advantage line as well. Whereas for La Rochelle, Bottier, when he came on, was just getting over the advantage line consistently. Uh, Bougarit had a phenomenal game. Lades with the offload to set up the rule try and drawing the man in. Uh, was pretty well worked. Ehi West had his kicking boots on, so yeah, folks. And uh, who was the replacement nine that was taken to Kerbalo's spot for this game? Him and his kicking and uh, just general control of the game. Can't even remember his name. That's how bad that is, but uh, uh, he was very composed. So um, yeah, 24 points to 21, folks. Very uh, suitable kind of game for a final. Like, it goes right down to the wire. That's what you want to see. Commiserations for Leinster fans, you still have to wait for that fifth star, but congratulations to La Rochelle. First time you guys get your hands on this trophy. Uh, it's a massive achievement for Ronan O'Gara and his boys. Um, they'll enjoy this one, but uh, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts, and um, I will talk to you guys again soon.